Hey guys, it's the Pink King here. I just got back from watching the FNAF movie. Eight years in the making. This film has been a giant emotional roller coaster throughout the nearly a decade now. From the highs of it being made to the lows of it being cancelled and postponed, this movie has been an absolute journey to be on. And to now finally have a movie, can, can I just take a second to step back and appreciate how far FNAF has come? From not even a decade ago, starting out as the last hope to save a one man's career, to now going on to be essentially a billion dollar franchise that's beloved by fans all over the world for such a unique and interesting idea. This franchise is incredible. And I've had a close connection to this franchise ever since it was created back in 2014. So to watch this go from such a small indie game to now mainstream movie, it warms my heart, you know, it gets me in the feels. But before I talk about the movie, let me just clarify what my expectations were bef before going into this movie. Because I didn't go in expecting the greatest thing. I kept my expectations fairly low. Reason being, this film's taken 8 years to be made, there'd be no way for this movie to even stand a chance of living up to the expectation that's laid. So that's not a fault of the movie, that's a fault of the production and making it take so long. So I'm going to give it a pass there. So yeah, going into this movie, my expectations were to a, a reasonable level. If you want to know why, watch my previous FNAF video, I explain more there. But. After finally watching the movie, I have one question to ask. Was it any good? Well, kinda. What the hell you say? Yeah, let me just clarify off the bat. There's gonna be spoilers in this video, so if you don't want any spoilers, then don't watch this video and go watch the movie itself. But this movie isn't really for everyone. And when I mean not for everyone, I mean not for everyone. This movie tries to be a lot of things. It tries to be an introduction to the FNAF universe for newcomers. It tries to be an actual movie with a genuine story. It tries to be an adaptation of FNAF. And tries to combine multiple storylines from FNAF into one cohesive movie. That is a lot to do in such a small amount of time. And as you could tell from my tone of voice, it all didn't really pay off. First, let's start off with the stuff that I really, really like. For one, I actually think the, the main two characters of this movie work really well. Mike Schmidt and his sister Abby are really good. They really make you get invested into these two characters and feel sorry for them. They make you care about these characters in a very meaningful way, with showing that Mike is trying to do the best he can to support his sister, even though he's arguably not doing the best of jobs, but he still cares about her and, still, and is still trying his best. With Abby, we get the little insight into what it's like for a little girl to be like this, and that although she's quite disturbed, almost, she still cares about her brother and doesn't want to leave his side. So, in terms of two main leads, I thought they were handled really well. I really did care about what would happen to these guys, and I really wanted to see them make through into the end. And that's a good thing to have in a horror movie like this, characters who you care about. Again, it's not the greatest, but for what it was, it's definitely pretty good. Another thing I like about this movie is the atmosphere of it. This film is very effective at setting a tone. With the way it's shot, to the way everything looks, this film knows how to create a feeling, whether, whether that be one of nostalgia from the classic games, or whether that be something new and interesting. With the way they position the camera, the way everything's lit, it's overall really, really impressive. I also liked the sets behind the movie. They really pulled you in and they looked really believable. Taking elements from the games, but also adding new stuff to it to make it feel much more real instead of a game, essentially. <laughs> Alongside all the little details that they've included in the movie, which there is a lot, and I've only seen the movie ones, and I can already, like, count so many little hidden easter eggs they snuck into this movie. Like, within the first five minutes, you see the, the rainbow from FNAF World. 
the goddamn rainbow from FNAF World. Like, <laughs> that takes an insane amount of detail to include. And for it not to be in your face, but a cool little Easter egg. And in terms of adapting FNAF, most of the time, it's really well done. I really like the animatronics in this movie. Although, a lot of people are gonna have problems with these guys. If you're expecting something cold and terrifying as in the original games, you're not really gonna get that here. Sure, sometimes you have it, but arguably this movie's biggest problem is the fact that it's not that scary. Sure, there's elements that surprise you, but this movie isn't scary. Which is a real shame, because FNAF's biggest strength in the early days was the horror aspect. As those games, despite being so simple and primitive, were really effective in getting good scares, and made the jump scares very useful in the games. In this movie, there's not really any jump scares. There, sure, there are jump scares here and then, but they're not really the ones like you see in the games. Which is kind of disappointing, but then again, it's understandable because it's a movie. But yeah, probably the, the scene in this movie that ruined most of the horror was the scene when the animatronics, Mike and Abby, along with Vanessa, create a, a fort. I'm not joking. These creepy animatronics go from intriguing and mysterious to suddenly best friends. It is done so fast, it's kind of funny. <laughs> and although pure FNAF and horror fans would probably be mad at this. I found it quite funny, because it was something a bit different from the original games. And honestly, just the sight of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy building a literal fort while goofy, friendly music plays and they all lie in the center on the floor, all happy. <laughs> it's just an image I didn't know I needed to see. And this brings me to what I said earlier, this movie is not for everyone. Arguably its biggest problem is the fact that it's trying to be too much. It can't decide whether it wants to be an adaptation of FNAF, a real movie, a horror movie, or a fun, stupid movie. It can't really make up its mind. And arguably when you try to be so many things at once, you end up being none of them. But for me, I think the best way to watch this movie is to not take it that seriously. Just go in expecting a good time, turn off your brain a little bit, and just have some fun, because there is a lot of things that make no sense in this movie. Especially Vanessa. Oh god, Vanessa. In the movie, she's not bad. She's not unwatchable. She's a fairly decent character, but her whole existence in this movie makes no sense. She's seen the animatronics before. She somehow knows that the kids possess the animatronics. And yet, she couldn't bother to try and even explain it to Mike before. There's a scene where Mike calls her out on this for keeping secrets, and she just says she's trying to save him in, in her own way. Well, no! <laughs> you, there's surely better ways you could have said it. There's surely better ways you could have warned him about this. And that kind of takes me out of the movie because now it's sort of being too dumb for it to be believable. But arguably, my biggest problem with the movie comes with Michael Afton. The main villain of FNAF, the most important character of the entire story, is only in it for less than 10 minutes. <laughs> his introduction was pretty good, and it sets up a really nice mystery to his link with Mike, but they just never follow through on it that good. He appears in the beginning as a normal creepy guy, but then he just suddenly appears at the end in the spring bodysuit with a knife trying to kill Mike. It's not set up at all, he's just suddenly thrown in. And again, that kind of adds to what I was saying earlier. This movie is so unfocused at times, it's not very clear with what it wants to be or what it's trying to do, especially with Michael. Because the way he dies at the end, and with the music swelling, they build him up as if he was built up for the entire movie as this looming threat. But he just suddenly appears and just suddenly dies. Like, what? <laughs> and honestly, Springtrap and Michael Afton are kind of my favourite parts of these movies, and to see the infamous death scene of Michael Afton, where the spring locks collapse on him, it not that satisfying because again you didn't build him up he just suddenly appears so this death doesn't really feel warranted and the death itself isn't really that interesting 
the original pixels were far more gruesome with the blood flying everywhere and just the right wriggling in pain we barely get any of that we just see a couple of spikes jam into his chest and that's really it in the original games it felt like the entire suit just suddenly collapsed in on him forcing him to be stuck inside this thing forever where here it looks like he could be saved i'm not lying it looks like he could be saved and when that's what happens to your main villain it kind of throws me out the movie. They do tease to a sequel with him becoming Springtrap at the end. I think a sequel would do better. I think a sequel would be better than this movie. If they keep it consistent and they have a clear vision. And the last thing I want to talk about that's a real positive is that they have a running gag with Bloom Boy just suddenly appearing. He even appears in the end credits, which, yeah, that's a really funny gag. <laughs> like... It doesn't happen too many times at the point where it becomes overused, but it happens just enough for it to be hilarious. So, overall, this movie was just... okay. It's not really exceptional, it's not really bad. It's got a lot of good elements, but a lot of bad elements. But surprisingly, I'm not mad. I had a good time watching this movie. And again, if you shut your brain off and don't think about it that much, this movie's a really good time. So overall, I give the FNAF movie a solid 5 out of 10. Not great, not bad, pretty much okay. I've been the Pink King, and I will see you all next time.